Here are the week's top stories, and a look ahead. One world leaders, who will gather in New York this week for the UN General Assembly, are facing no small number of international crises. Just days after the UN adopted new sanctions, North Korea fired a missile over Japan, its 15th such test this year. The North's threats are pushing Japan to consider an arms buildup and testing U.S. regional alliances. In Southeast Asia, 400,000 Rohingya refugees have fled Myanmar for Bangladesh in recent weeks. More than half are children, and many are without their parents. Above, refugees making the trek. And President Trump's tweets about London's latest terrorist attack strained relations with Britain. He addresses the General Assembly on Tuesday. Underscore 2. Russia has often been a focus at the General Assembly, and this year will be no different. Analysts fear its huge military exercises with Belarus could be a Trojan horse to establish bases at the borders of NATO nations. The drills in Wednesday. And more of the extreme methods Russia used to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election came to light. A Russian company with Kremlin ties spread vitriolic messages on divisive issues via hundreds of fake Facebook accounts, some of which use stolen photos to add authenticity, like those of a Brazilian salesman and his family. Above. Our magazine examined how the Kremlin built one of the most powerful information weapons of the 21st century, and why it might be impossible to stop. Underscore 3. The British police made what they said was a significant arrest in the terrorist explosion in a London subway station last week that injured at least 30 people. A second man was arrested late Saturday. Above, a masked British police officer entering a property being searched outside London. Underscore 4. To the dismay of conservatives, President Trump and top Democratic leaders had a surprise meeting of the minds, creating a possible deal to pair legislation to protect young undocumented immigrants known as dreamers with enhanced border security, but setting aside the issue of the border wall. Mr. Trump's management style is under scrutiny after accounts that he humiliated Attorney General Jeff Sessions in a meeting. And despite addressing down on race relations from Tim Scott, the only black Republican senator, the president reiterated his stance that both sides were at fault for violence that erupted during a rally of white supremacists last month. Underscore 5. Partisan tensions were also evident after Harvard announced it had invited Chelsea Manning, above, to be a visiting fellow, along with Sean Spicer and Corey Lewandowski, both former associates of President Trump. Sharp, immediate blowback, including from the CIA director, prompted Harvard to rescind the offer and apologize for not recognizing up front the full implications of appearing to endorse him. Don Manning a former army private convicted of leaking vast droves of classified information to WikiLeaks. Underscore 6. The scope of hurricane damage grew clearer as Florida and the Gulf Coast made progress in cleaning up. But the horror of eight deaths at a sweltering Florida nursing home that had lost air conditioning raised scrutiny of disaster planning. Everglades City, Florida, above. And a reporter who was dispatched to St. Martin, one of the Caribbean islands hit hardest by Irma describes life without fuel, electricity, schools or a dependable food supply. See the damage on St. Martin, Anguilla, and Barbuda, building by building. Tropical Storm Maria is the latest threat to the Caribbean, while U.S. forecasters said people on the East Coast should keep an eye on Hurricane Jose. Underscore 7. Cleanups are also in order in the business sector. Equifax took days to put together a cogent response to a breach that compromised the data of up to 143 million Americans, but don't hold your breath for more federal oversight. A lawsuit over claims of sexual harassment at the online lending startup SoFi cost its CEO, Mike Cagney, his job. Another startup, Upload, was able to quietly settle a lurid lawsuit. A kink room encouraged employees to have sex in the office, and go on with business as usual. And the former pharmaceutical executive Martin Shkreli, who's awaiting sentencing on a fraud conviction, was jailed for offering $5,000 for a strand of Hillary Clinton's hair. Is there a Shkreli syndrome? Researchers say that engaging in illicit behavior as a teenager may point to the success of entrepreneurs, and also foretell their undoing. Underscore 8. Other difficulties facing women, three former Google employees are suing, accusing the tech behemoth of paying women less than men. And, bafflingly, 
when Tokyo-based Nikon enlisted 32 photographers from Asia, Africa and the Middle East to promote a new camera, not a single one was a woman. Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany, the world's most powerful woman, is expected to be elected to a fourth term next Sunday. But even so, her country a eh?